Hey, wonder hussy here. If you've ever driven from Las Vegas to Reno or vice versa, you've probably noticed something unexpected about halfway through the drive. A giant lake in the middle of this arid landscape, shocking blue in the midst of all this brown. This is Walker Lake, AKA the biggest, most beautiful lake you've never heard of. It's actually a remnant of a giant prehistoric lake that I think used to cover something like a third of the state of Nevada. Uh, this giant lake called Lake Lahontan, which mostly dried up thousands of years ago, but left behind a couple of giant puddles in the form of Pyramid Lake and Walker Lake. But unfortunately, Walker Lake is one of those things that looks beautiful from a distance, but not so good close up. It's an endorheic lake, which means it's fed by a river and doesn't have any outlet to the ocean. So it's like a desert basin lake. And it's fed by the Walker River, which comes out of the Sierras back here. Well, unfortunately, the Walker River has been almost 100% diverted to agricultural uses in the Smith Valley, I think. So I don't even know if any water at all from the Walker River still goes into Walker Lake. So the lake is shrinking up. In fact, you can see they have these signs here. This was the lake level in 1882. Okay. <laughs> and look how far we are above the water. And then look, there's another sign here showing how high the lake was in 1908. <laughs> and well, there's signs going all the way down this boat ramp showing you how high the lake was at various years in the past. And as if being slowly starved to death wasn't bad enough, what water there is left here after evaporation is becoming, I guess, saltier and saltier. So much so that uh, the fish that used to live here uh, can't survive and have all died off. And as a consequence, most of the birds that used to stop here on their migratory paths north don't stop here anymore. Matter of fact, the town of Hawthorne here used to have an annual loon festival every year to celebrate these loons that would fly through and stop at Walker Lake on their way north. Well, they had to cancel the festival in 2009 because the loons don't stop here anymore. And it's not just the loons. I mean, if you come down here, it looks like hardly anyone stops here anymore. It's really sad. There's this kind of lakeside resort town here that looks like it probably used to be a really cool place. But nowadays, it's mostly busted up, boarded up, and abandoned. I know several years ago, my sister and I tried to stay in the motel here, which at the time was supposedly still open, but nobody answered when we called. So we drove down to the office and went in and there was nobody there. And then even when we rang the bell on the desk, like nobody ever showed up. So gosh, the whole thing was so creepy that we just turned around and left and well, went and stayed in a place in Hawthorne that turned out to be even creepier. More on which later. But motel or no motel, you can still hang out and camp here. It's just that, like I said, unfortunately, Walker Lake is one of those places that really isn't all that pleasant when you get up close and personal. All that's really here on the beach is tumbleweeds and billions and billions and billions of flies. I'm not kidding or exaggerating. I actually camped here last night and well, last night it was fine. It was actually pretty pleasant. But when I woke up this morning and opened up my car and was making coffee and, you know, packing things up, I don't know how, but God, there must have been at least a thousand, probably more like 2000 flies, little tiny flies inside my car. Ugh. Well, I tried to be laissez-faire about it. Like, oh, well, you know, they'll leave when I, you know, I'll drive down the road and roll all the windows down and they'll all fly out. Well, that didn't work. I rolled all my windows down and drove up and down the highway at like 70 miles an hour trying to blast them out. And gosh, I don't know. They just like clung on with their little legs. I mean, there were still a, probably a thousand of them in my car. I'm like, how am I gonna get rid of these things? Ugh. So I went into Hawthorne. So I thought I'll, I'll go to a gas station and use a, the air compressor, you know, for, for your tires and like blast them out with that. And even that didn't work. I'm telling you, they were like stuck on like Velcro. So I ended up having to go to the town park in Hawthorne in the blazing 100 degree heat. Well, actually, I think it was only about 90, but it felt like 100. And I had to take everything out of my car and clean everything off and pick every bug out individually. 
it took the majority of my day. And then the worst thing was when I finally got my whole car cleaned out and I went to roll the windows up. Remember, I rolled all the windows down when I was blowing up and down the highway to try to blast the bugs out. Well, I even rolled the window down in the back, like the tailgate window, which I very rarely use that window. And I guess from all the off-roading I do, there was a lot of dust inside the, well, inside the, the tailgate, the door. So it got jammed. The window wouldn't close. It was stuck open. Oh, it was a nightmare. I was like, okay, well, I was planning to be in this area for a couple more days shooting videos, but if my window doesn't roll up, well, I can't go off-roading because the back of the car will get full of dust. And well, I wouldn't be comfortable leaving the car parked anywhere because the back window is wide open. Anybody can get in and steal my stuff. Not to mention the fact that I have to sleep in the car with it wide open. Oh, it was a nightmare. So I went to, thankfully there's an auto parts store here. One of my friends advised me that I should get a, like this can of spray lubricant and just spray it down in the, the window track, you know, in the crack. So I did that and at first it didn't seem like that was working either. So I actually went to a couple mechanics here in town, but well, fortunately they weren't available to help me. So I didn't end up spending any money other than the $7 I spent on that spray lubricant, which actually did end up working. I just had to let it sit there long enough. So I noticed like after a bit, I could roll the window up like an inch. And then if I waited, sprayed some more, waited like 20 minutes, I'd roll up two inches and then wait 20 minutes, spray some more, three inches. Man, I spent all dang day in the town of Hawthorne in the blistering heat, spraying lube into my window track and trying to roll my window up. But the good news is I finally got her up and it only cost me $7 and an entire day of my life. Anyway, like I said, I've camped here before like four or five times that I've never had any problems. So it must've just been the time of year. Today's June 11th, I think, or June 12th. So note to self, don't camp at Walker Lake in early to mid June. But speaking of time of year, it could actually be worse because I think if you camp here or if you come here a little bit later in the summer, then the whole place is infested with spiders. Supposedly there's thousands and thousands and thousands of spiders everywhere here, probably feeding on all the flies but apparently all the campgrounds and picking tables and everything are covered in spider webs. And it's supposed to be really creepy, like something out of a horror movie. And as if all that isn't bad enough, you're not even supposed to swim in the Southern part of Walker Lake. There's all these warning signs because there's unexploded munitions in the lake from this nearby uh, Naval weapons facility. That's right. Apparently Walker Lake is exceptionally deep. So I guess the Navy uses it to test all kinds of super secret undersea weaponry. Uh, everything from like top secret submarines to underwater missiles and stuff. There's like this naval weapons facility in Hawthorne called NAVSEA, N-A-V-S-E-A. And I guess they develop the, I don't know, bombs and munitions, and whatever. Either they lost track of some of them or there's just, for whatever reason, some of them are floating around in the lake at the south end. So you're really not supposed to swim in Walker Lake. But speaking of super secret underwater weapons, there's actually a couple of really good conspiracy theories associated with Walker Lake. First, there's rumored to be some sort of Loch Ness type monster living in Walker Lake. Now, I know a lot of, or some other lakes have a sort of Loch Ness shtick. Like I know Lake Tahoe has this supposed Tahoe Tessie, but I don't know, to me that's just pure tourist trap hokum. But the Walker Lake sea monster is actually somewhat more plausible because like I said, this is the remnant of a prehistoric lake. So I guess conceivably there were some kind of <laughs> dinosaur fish living in Lake Lahontan, the giant prehistoric lake. And then when it dried up and just left the puddles, well, I suppose it's within the realm of possibility that a few of those prehistoric dinosaur fish got trapped in what's now Walker Lake. And well, there's enough of them in there to sustain a population. But the other conspiracy theory about Walker Lake is even better. <laughs> I first heard about this uh, when I was traveling around Nevada with my sister about five or six years ago. We were camping, but it was February and it got too cold to camp. So we had to come into Hawthorne and get a room. But well, since we're broke, we had to go for the cheapest room we could find, which was here. 
at this motel that used to be called the Sand and Sage Lodge. Now it's a Motel 6, but back then, oh my God, it was totally Bates Motel. I mean, at that time, there were only two rooms occupied in the whole hotel, us. In fact, I remember we were right here at number 108. And then of course the room right next to us, which lucky for us, we were able to, well, listen into the sounds of the meth head couple next door having sex all night. But hey, it was only 40 bucks. But the front desk clerk was also really Norman Bates-ish. I don't mean to disparage him because he was actually super nice. In fact, he even called us in our room to invite us to breakfast the next morning. And keep in mind, this hotel did not offer a free breakfast. He was literally just inviting us over to his office to cook us breakfast. So of course we took him up on it. And well, over breakfast, he filled us in on some really far out information on Walker Lake. Okay, according to him, first of all, Walker Lake is so deep that no one has ever seen the bottom of it. And apparently the government isn't just developing undersea munitions there. <laughs> They're also testing what's called USOs, kind of like UFOs, but instead of unidentified flying objects, it's unidentified submersible objects. And apparently when they're done testing or vetting the USOs, they send them out to sea via a super secret tunnel that goes all the way from the bottom of Walker Lake underneath and across the entire state of California where it comes out into the Pacific Ocean somewhere around Malibu. So apparently there's this top secret tunnel that goes all the way from the bottom of Walker Lake to Malibu. I guess that's why no one's ever seen the bottom of Walker Lake. Now, unfortunately, I can't vouch for the veracity of any of this information. I mean, when I got back from that trip, I did go online and do some research and I found some people talking about it in like a conspiracy theory forum, but that was pretty much the only info I could find. But then uh, I made another video about Walker Lake a couple months ago. And well, some people in the comments were uh, mentioning that same conspiracy theory. So. Whether it's true or not, at the very least, it's a, I guess, fairly widespread conspiracy theory. Whatever the case, Walker Lake is still really fascinating to me, and I really wish I could have been here to see what it was like in its, well, in its heyday when the water was up to those signs and when that resort town was booming. I mean, I, I bet it must have been just absolutely beautiful. But even now, I still like it because I feel like it has a really, well, kind of a surreal, creepy, post-apocalyptic beauty to it. So if you are traveling between Vegas and Reno or vice versa, and you have some extra time, it's definitely worth a stop. Just camp overnight at your own risk and stay the hell out of the water. <laughs>